Hi there guys, welcome back to another C Sharp tutorial. In this tutorial we're gonna talk about arrays. Uh, basically arrays are um, a group of variables all having the same name, uh, having the same data type and could uh, you can access them uh, using numbers or variables. Okay, so you might be wondering why do I want to do that since I have you know, send the variables. Well, basically, let's say you have a thousand value or a million values, and you want to find the sum. So it's impra impractical to, let's say, uh, write a single assignment statement to calculate the sum of these million numbers. Okay. Also, you don't want to spend lots of time defining a1, a2, a3, a4 up to a million. It's really impractical. So, this is where arrays comes in. So, first thing we are gonna look at is how to define arrays. Let us define a simple array here. Uh, write int. So far, so good. You open and close a bracket. This tells the computer that you are defining an array. Next, we are going to write a name. So this is going to be a number. And now uh, we must, you know, generate it. Here, this is only a definition. The array is not created here. But now, new int of, let's say, 4. Okay, this means you are creating 4 integers and you want to access them by the name number okay so how how do you do that okay so you could access them like this number of 0 equals 10 number of 1 equals 20 let's say uh, and then I would like to do something strange here I equal 3 uh, num uh, number of i minus 1 equal 30 and then number of i equal 40 and I'm gonna say i equals 0 whatever now you might be wondering what is this what does uh, this program do well it does nothing I'm just trying to demonstrate uh, what could be done with arrays or how you could fill them so let us trace this program here I'm gonna say step over. Okay, so here, if we put the pointer on numbers, you can see here that there it says int 4 between two brackets. And if you click on the plus sign, you can see that it shows four variables. The first one between two brackets 0, 1, 2, and 3. This tell, it tells you that uh, the integers here, the four integers, are placed one after the other. And you access each one by changing the number. It's like, uh, you know, like the mailbox for, uh, you know, if you are living in a building, usually uh, there is one, one cabinet, big cabinet for uh, mail, and each apartment have a box. So there is the first box for the first apartment, this next one, the second box for the second apartment, the third box, uh, third apartment, and so on. So the mailman doesn't know what the apartment is, he just check the number and based on that he goes to the corresponding mailbox. And you could think of it uh, this way, okay? This is a very simple analogy. Now let's see how we can fill the values. So here, check between the two brackets, there is a value 0, which, mean, which tells the computer to go to the first one here and for, put the value in it. So let uh, I'll run this and what do we get now check this out you get 10 and next one we will fill the value at 1 and we can check this out and it's 20 now uh, if we have a look at this one we fill a value i here and then we fill the value i minus 1 now the way if, if you see something like this what you have to do is the following what is the value of the variable it's a 3. Now we have an expression so 3 minus 1 equals 2. What that means it's like you are accessing the second uh, you can see here you are accessing this one. Okay you are gonna access this one. 
Okay, so now we are gonna run this, and if you have a look here, you can see you have just filled this value. And now you you go to this example over here, and the last one we have just the standard variable, so we are gonna go to the last variable over here, which is which is having the index three, and uh, sorry, which is this one. Okay, and uh, we run. And there we go. We have filled these arrays. Okay, but you can see here we used uh, standard numbers, and here we used expression, and here we used a single variable. Okay, so you could use whatever that is convenient for you. Now, why I am showing you this? Well, because uh, this formula over here, the the last one. It's very common for uh, uh, when you are dealing with, with arrays. For example, if you want to read them, display them, or do some calculations. So, uh, let us try and write a simple program to read uh, some numbers from the screen. Okay? So, here I'm going to say for int i equals 0, i is smaller than 4, i plus plus. Okay, there we go. I guess say system console read line oops write line uh maybe write uh enter number okay so uh, I'm gonna say number of i equals int dot parse system console read line Okay, so this way we can read them. And let's say you want to display the variables. So, very similar technique i equals 0, i is more than 4, and i plus plus. System, console, write line, number, number of i. And finally, system console lead line. Okay. <clears throat> so when we run this, I'm gonna enter one, two, three, four, and you get the values one, two, three, four. Now, so far this is not that cool. We do have just three uh, fold four integers and display them. Well, it becomes cool when you want to, let's say, read 40 integers. Okay, so in this case you can fold, you know, 40 integers. I, I don't want to, you know, fold all of these, but basically what I'm trying to show you here is that uh, is that when you have, you are having many variables you just change a single number and usually your calculation will be updated accordingly okay you don't have to define more variables manually uh, you know just uh, changing a single number will do the trick for you now I'm gonna change this and make uh, the program you know store the values uh, the value i. Okay, so I'm gonna run this. You can see now in this example we have we have just filled uh, the values uh, from zero up to thirty nine. Uh, I'll make it a little bit more exciting, and instead of calculating the same number or storing the same number, I will store the square of that number. Okay, so I'm gonna run this here, and you can see now we have just written a program that calculates the square of the numbers from 0 up to 39. You might be wondering, okay, what if I want to calculate to a thousand? So we change this one to a thousand, change this one to a thousand, and this one to a thousand and you run and 
there you are okay so you can see how useful this is as a technique okay uh, you you could use you know the previous methods uh, uh, you know without using arrays but one of the advantages here we are not displaying the value as soon as we are calculating the square we are performing the full uh, the calculation or uh, the calculation of the square first for all of the given values and then we are displaying them you might be asking why do, do you want to do that well many reasons maybe you want to make the program easier to understand so in this case this part calculation and this part is for display so it's more obvious uh, for whomever reading that, this program it will be easier to understand because the code is not mixed uh, right this is one thing another thing that you might need is for example maybe you need to do a calculation that requires multiple scans of the same data okay for example the standard deviation or something like that okay uh, and also doing the code this way allows you to simplify your work and maybe split it into functions okay uh, well, uh, let us try and uh, have more examples here. Now, instead of using numbers, let's say you want to find uh, uh, write a program that you would enter, let's say, four names or five names or n names, and it will get you uh, or display that, uh, these names for you. Okay, so far this is not a fancy program, it's very straightforward. So basically, you define here uh, instead of string, this uh, integer this is going to be a string. I'm going to say names equals a new string, let's say maximum of 10 names. Okay, maybe make them four, I make them small, very small example int i equals 0 i small than 4 and i plus plus and I'm gonna say names of i equals system council read line this would read the names for you okay and then for int i equals 0 i small than 4 and i plus plus and I'm gonna say system dot council right line names of i Oops, of i. There we go. And put semicolon. That's it. Okay. So, uh, in the traditional method, you would write uh, system council read line for the first one, system council read line for the second, and third and fourth, and then system council write line four times for the other four names uh, to display these four names. And if you have ten. It will be a disaster because you will have to repeat things again and again. CD, EFGH, okay, whatever. So you can see now we've got the values or the names displayed. Okay, and again, if you want to change uh, the number of names being read and displayed, so you could just change this number over here, this one here this one here and that's it it's as simple as that and we, we repeat the process so I'm gonna say Smith Todd Michael uh, Mark uh, okay is there someone's is it a name mark a name I'm not sure but anyway uh, Tim and uh, yeah John, um, let's say Tiger, and uh, can't come up with the names. I, I have very limited imagination. I'm sorry. Uh, there's a spider next to my keyboard, so I'm gonna write spider. And since we are writing spiders, maybe I'm gonna say cat and uh, dog. Okay, so you can see the program now remembers all these names 
and uh, I didn't have to change and uh, you know much uh, and uh, you know if I put a zero here or two zeros two zeros here two zeros basically the program will be dealing with hundreds or thousands of name thousands of names okay it's as simple as that not very complex uh, very straightforward uh, I think uh, that, that will be all for today. In the next set of tutorials, we will start investigating uh, some of the cool tricks, like, for example, finding the maximum and minimum values, displaying values in reverse order, investigating how to sort the arrays, and do some cool stuff like that. Okay? So, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye bye.